within two years and dispute any other problems on your credit report. Don't let those things sit on there because these people are trying to say you owe them money. They're trying to make you look bad out here in these credit streets. And we just can't simply not allow that. We just can't simply allow that. So you make sure that you keep up with that credit report and that you're not nobody play you. So. Hello everyone, my name is Shanae. Thank you so much for tuning into Shanae's Law. If you are new, welcome. If you are returning, thank you so much for coming back to check on me, okay? Now, we are almost halfway done with our Millennial Success Bylaw series and we've come a really long way. We've talked about how to save money, how to budget, how to get a loan, how to get some credit, how to get a credit card, hopefully not some of those signals off and you guys are well on your way or about to be well on your way to be debt free, saving money, killing these credit cards with kindness. And we're all the way on part six, but I'm glad that you all have been keeping up with it because we are building. We are building. Every video that you've seen thus far has set the foundation for the next. So it's important for you to have all those things digest into your system before we move on. This is part six. We will be talking about increasing and protecting your credit scores. Because now that you've got some credit or you're getting some credit, it's going to be important for you to protect it with your life, okay? So you want to keep in mind that this usually happens over time. You're not going to get a, a credit history or a strong credit history overnight. It's going to be taken into account with the new lifestyle that you have and what are you doing to utilize it into the future, okay? Because credit is a necessary evil and we all need to learn how to utilize it and make it work for us. So we're going to just jump right in. Rule number one. Practicing good spending habits. Make sure that you are still spending within your budget. That's never going to change. Even millionaires try to put a cap on it, okay? This is never going to change. You only want to purchase what you can afford. Meaning, if you can afford it without having to use the credit card or get a loan, then do that, okay? We're not trying to go bankrupt out here. You know, if you knew better, you would do better. So once we start... Doing better because we know better. That's when the money's going to come. All right. You also want to keep low balances on all of the accounts for financing. So if you are about to get an auto loan, a home loan, you want to keep certain things within reason. Okay. Don't go out here just because you get approved for an, out, an outlandish amount. That doesn't mean you have to use all of it. If you get approved for a $300,000 home, you don't have to use all of that 300000 It's great that you could get approved for that much, but that doesn't mean you have to use all of it, okay? And keep low balances on these credit cards that you're getting. We all discussed that. Do not open up too many accounts at once. Don't go out here balling out of control. Don't be getting a house. Don't be getting a car. Don't be getting a credit card. Don't be buying a boat. Do not be getting all these lines of credit open at once. You want to keep everything at a minimal, okay? Moving on, rule number two, budgeting your funds. Again, we only want to use our credit for good. So use this only for emergencies. Use it like a layaway plan, a layaway plan that you actually plan on paying for getting out. I'm not saying get it and leave it, okay? I'm saying be responsible and taking care of it. Finance major purchases. We've already discussed this a little bit when we talked about credit cards, but this is for all of your loans. Any money that you were borrowing from folks, if you got it from the Best Buy and they financed, if you got something from Lowe's and you got a car or you a line of credit with them, keep these purchases paid through them and pay them off, okay? But the big expenditures, we still, we still want to put on credit, but we want to pay it off. We want to be responsible. Do not abuse your credit limits. The credits on your cards, the credits through your banks. Again, it, just because they give you an outlandish amount, you don't have to meet or exceed that amount. You want to keep it all under it as much as possible because remember, you owe this money. And ask for credit increases for larger purchases when necessary. So say you've been saving, you've been doing good. The car that you want is a shy of maybe, let's just say a thousand bucks. We don't want to go too crazy. And they gave you something relatively low. It's not, it's not uncommon to go ahead and ask for a larger increase. It's not, especially if Christmas is coming up and your credit card, especially if you have a lower limit. This only works for people with low limits, okay? Y'all with $2,000 limits and stuff, I'm not really talking to y'all, okay? I'm talking about the people that have the $500, $600 limit. You can ask for an increase if you've proven yourself and you've earned it, okay? We talking about people who have not. So make sure that you are still doing the best that you can 
and make sure that you, you can ask for the limit. But the $3,000 limit person, you don't need an increase. You better make it do what it do with what you got. Okay. So moving on. Rule number three, maintaining payments. Okay. Now that you're out of debt, you're scot-free. We got some savings building up. We got a credit card now, or we got a loan, we got a car loan, or maybe even Sally Mae is up your tail. Look, maintain your payments because this is about progression. Don't think that you're scot-free just because you, you, you know, you've come a long way. Keep these payments made. Set up alerts as reminders on your phone if necessary so you don't forget. Make these payments and make them on time. Continue to pay off any of your current debts. If you still owe people a little bit here and there, smaller debts, pay them off. Don't lose track of that. Keep paying those debts off. And always pay more than minimal balance. Not just for credit cards, for loans that you have as well. I myself, when I had my car note, I paid them about $100 more every time that I could. I was not just going to pay them back. So remember, it's the interest. It's the interest. And try to keep all the balances at zero. And low on revolving credit. Your revolving credit is those credit cards, okay? The ones that, you know, you can get out and come back in. Keep them low. Keep them non-existent. Rule number four, creating a credit history. So if you've been borrowing money from folks and you've been proactive and making payments and you haven't been behind, then you are in good standing, okay? You have a credit history. It takes time though. It doesn't happen overnight. You've got to have old people for a long period of time to get to this point. And if you have, congratulations. Do not close inactive credit card accounts too soon. Now, I know certain situations arise if you have poor people poor spending practices and people aren't feel like they can't trust you or you had a bad experience with these people. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is the active accounts that you do have, don't close them out too soon. Don't close them out too soon. You want to close them out when everything is paid for, when the account was in good standing and maybe if you just want to part ways, but don't do it too fast. And all, uh, only open lines of credit when necessary. That goes back to what we said earlier. Don't just be open up lines of credit because you can. Once that credit score does get, you know, in the good range, don't just be out here shopping till you drop, buying everything because you can. Don't abuse your new power. Do not abuse it. They will take it back. Keep all of your accounts in good standing. All right, you make all of your payments. Make the payments. Make them on time. Use your credit cards ever so often. You don't have to use them every day, every week. You can use your debit card. You can use cash. But just make sure it's getting paid, okay? And all of your closed accounts will still appear on your credit report. So don't fret. They're going to be there. My car note is still on there from Lord knows when. So just make sure that it is paid off. Make sure you got your paperwork that it is paid off. And it should say it on the credit report. It should say inactive. Because normally when you pay off things like that, it'll say that. It's not going to say open. Open would be anything that's currently being paid on all your credit cards are going to stay open too if you have any all right rule number five credit management now that you have some credit you've got to properly manage it so that you want to monitor all active accounts frequently I, I, that means everything you home payment the auto any student loans any furniture financing loans that you may have any type of debt that you have or any type of open lines of credit that you have, keep up with that. Keep up with the statements, the due dates, the payments, and make sure that every payment that you've made is on record because they will try to play you. Check your credit statements and reports often, i.e. to prevent fraudulent and unwanted purchases or skipped payments. Because again, they will try to play you if you're not careful. So use apps, use your Credit Karma app, use your LifeLock. A lot of people like Credit Sesame. Take advantage of these companies, especially these free ones that give you these apps to monitor your spending, your credit history. And I check, check it every week if you can. Check your Credit Karma every single week. And now banks are getting in on it. Institutional banks, they're doing it. They're doing it for free. They should have been doing it a long time ago. But every week, check your money, if, you, if not every day. Check your money all the time. Check it off. And it should be a habit. You should. You got to know what's going on. You're working hard. You're getting out of debt. You have no debt no matter where you are in life. You're working hard for this money. You got to stay on top of it. Stay on top of your credit usage too. So check those reports. Check that out as much as you want to. And make sure that all of your active accounts and any ba possible balances are showing. Now how, how it works on Credit Karma and uh, Bank of America, those apps, 
they do keep up every few weeks or so. Sometimes they're a little bit behind and it won't show your most recent purchases or payments, but they show them. So just keep up. They're kind of slow, especially TransUnion. They're a little slow. And you want to know the cause is both good and bad if your credit score has increased or decreased. And I, yet again, they'll have the little number if it went up some points and down some points. It'll show you. And it'll tell you once you click on it, it'll say, hey, you utilize your credit card this much more. You borrowed $200. And like, you know, when your auto, if you have an auto loan or home loan, every payment that's made, it shows. So normally the credit goes up when you've had a payment, a big payment or something like that. So just keep that in mind. And you also want to monitor any increase on credit score reports. Okay. Now increase, an inquiry is basically when somebody checks your credit. And it depends on who it is because an inquiry can be soft and an inquiry can be hard. This is why really young people, like 17, 18, 19, 20, be careful because when y'all go to retail stores, they try to play y'all and get y'all to open up a credit card and y'all don't know nothing about credit. So I hope this video finds you in the previous video. Make sure you watch all these videos because they're really going to target you. You don't know no better. A lot of them are trying to get conversion or get credit for their company, for their report, for their daily goal, and they try to target you. They're like, yo, get a credit card. You want to apply? You want to apply? Don't. Because if you don't know anything about a credit card and responsibilities that go with it, you're going to be SOL. And it's going to be an inquiry on a credit report that you might not even be aware exists in this world yet. So the soft inquiries are the ones that they roll off like six months to a year something it goes away really quick and it doesn't really impact the score the way a hard credit inquiry does the hard credit increase are like the institutions that you're trying to get a bank or a house with they shave off points and they stay on that report for like they can stay on there like three years it just depends on who they are and what you was trying to get they stay on that report longer and more points to get knocked off of that credit score so you keep up with that. Don't let people fool you. You also want to remove all hard inquiries that don't fall off within two years and dispute any other problems on your credit report. Don't let those things sit on there because these people are trying to say you owe them money. They're trying to make you look bad out here in these credit streets. And we just can't simply not allow that. We just can't simply allow that. So you make sure that you keep up with that credit report and that you're not letting nobody play you. So moving on. Rule number six, check all three credit companies. Okay, you got Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. Credit card only shows two. All right, a lot of companies only show two. Very few show all three. But you can go to annualcreditreport.com. I go every single year. I go every December, but you ain't got to do what I do. I go every year. I check all three reports. But remember, some of them are slower than others. Some of them show things that others don't. So you want to check all three. Never just trust the words of one credit union. You trust your all three together and make sure everybody's up to speed. If you see any discrepancies, fight them to death. Fight them to the death, okay? Don't let them incorrect items just stick there on your credit report when they don't deserve to be there. And, you know, some companies do up their fast words like that. And, of course, all three reports can, can vary throughout time among results. So check all three. Never be dependent upon one. Never be dependent upon two of them. You want to check all three credit reports to make sure that you are in the clear and there's nothing that you have to fight. All right? So, all right. That concludes part six, increasing and protecting your credit scores. So, I hope you've learned something. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them down in the comment section. Make sure that you step into this greatness. Like, comment, and subscribe to this channel and share this video because again we got to get people cognizant of what's going on we got to spread the awareness there's a plethora of people who don't get this knowledge and they they're confused a lot of people don't want to be vocal about it a lot of people don't want to say i don't know because you know with age people get a little scared to admit that they didn't find this out sooner than later but that's okay that's okay that's why this channel is here so share this video with anybody who is thinking about getting a credit card and Getting some credit, period. They don't know anything about credit. Share these videos. Keep them moving along, man. Do it for the culture. Do it for the culture. All right? So this is Shanae signing off. Thank you so much for watching Shanae's Law. I'm going to see you guys in part seven really soon. Make sure that you are watching all these videos step by step in sequence because we are building. I promise you, by the time we get to number 10, you guys are going to be amazed amazed at what we've accomplished and what you've learned and why every video was in a sequence that it is. So thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have a wonderful day. I'll see you soon.